Endeavor PH, sir. Research of fifth floor. Fifth floor. Salamat. Today, I am so excited because we speak not just to a company, but to a company that helps other companies start right, run strong, and finish excellently. I'm Anthony Pangilinan, and this is The Boardroom. Endeavor is an international nonprofit organization that aims to help out high-impact entrepreneurs improve and grow their businesses through a community of mentors, access to talent from all parts of the world, as well as smart capital. Launched last January 2015, Endeavor Philippines Managing Director Manny Ayala aims to promote a healthy culture of entrepreneurship in the hope of creating more jobs, ultimately helping the Philippines' economic growth. I'm looking for cubicles and work desks, but I see different companies. And look at this kind of furniture. Whew. I guess it's what they call a collaborative workspace. Well, here's one guy who's working right now. Hey, Hi. Anthony. <laughs> welcome to our humble abode. Thank you. Welcome to the boardroom, Manny. Thank you. How does this work? I mean, I, I was expecting cubicles and desks, you know, under one company, but it seems like there are many companies here. You know, I think the whole reason co-working spaces came to be is Okay, that so that's another way of calling it, huh? Co-working space. No, the co-working space. Okay. Is that uh, you had an explosion of startups, right? And they needed a place to go, but they weren't just looking for a space. They were looking for a community, right? But the, because, whole, the, the whole mindset of, of being in a community in a very competitive world, yeah. why would I want to commune with potential competitors? Because you feed off each other, right? Wow. You feed off each other's energy. Everyone's here, gung-ho. They're trying to create a new business. You feed off each other's ideas as and well. And you feed off each other's you employees do. too. You can knock on somebody's door and say, can you join me? Piracy well, can abound. <laughs> you know what? I think there's probably, you know, kind of a, uh, a code of honor. You feed off each other's ideas, but you probably don't feed off each other's staff. This is, this is a new mindset. Yeah. This Absolutely. Is, this is not something that was prevalent in our time. <laughs> think, of this, think of this as almost like an open system. And you're right, it's so different from our time. When you think about traditional industries like banking or even Hollywood, mm -hmm. just to have a conversation, sometimes the first thing they'll say is, hey, you got to sign an NDA before I talk to you. Right, right. These days, you go into a Starbucks in Silicon Valley and you see a guy in a laptop and you ask for advice. This guy's nine times out of 10 or maybe 9.5 times out of 10 gonna say, okay, sure, what do you need? Well, we're gonna discuss a lot of things today, but we can't, we can't do it here. Well, why don't we do it in the boardroom? Thought you'd never ask, Lani. All right. Let's do it. Cool. First of all, happy anniversary, Manny. Thank you. It, could, it feels good to be two. Two years in the Philippines, but 20 years That's worldwide. right. So we started Endeavor um, for the very first time 20 years ago. How's it been for you? How's the ride been? How's the endeavor been for you the past two years? You know what? I keep telling people this. I wake up every morning and I am so excited to be doing what I'm doing. Whew. Right. What is the mission of Endeavor? You know, the mission of Endeavor has always been to catalyze long-term economic growth in markets that need a boost, right? So you might say emerging economies or challenged economies. But if you have six companies currently yeah. under your wing, eight yeah. individuals, yeah. how does that impact an entire country? Yeah. So what we like to say is that in Endeavor, we're all about creating a multiplier effect. And um, the ethos that runs through the organization and that runs through the entrepreneurs that we get is the pay it forward mentality. Okay. Right, so part of being high impact means not only are you great at building a large, successful business? Yes, because right. this is your goal. High right. impact entrepreneurs. A the lot other, of people use correct. that term, high impact. What's the other side, The other side of high impact, actually, is that you pay it forward once you reach a certain level of success, right? Mm. So you reinvest your success in the next generation of entrepreneurs. You do that by mentoring others, by being a role model for others, and in many cases, by investing money into these other entrepreneurs. And when you do that, you create this ripple effect, right? So to be part of the Endeavor group, to be blessed by en Endeavor support, you need to include paying it forward as part of your vision, Absolutely. your mission. Absolutely, absolutely. So what are you looking for in Endeavor? What is it that Endeavor looks at before it decides, 
We're going behind this agreement. So four times a year in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and then eight times a year across the world, we have these events. And they're a little bit like that TV show Shark Tank. Okay. Right. So this is where entrepreneurs okay. go in Present front of themselves, a of judges. The judges evaluate them, ask questions. And then at the end of it all, after the entrepreneurs have gone away, the judges get together and they discuss the entrepreneurs and then they vote on them. So actually, what we like to say in Endeavor is that anyone who's in the network, I use the 3M screen. And the 3M is an acronym for Magaling. Right? So Ayos. you look at what they're doing, you say, wow, kaling na na. Mm -hmm. nagawa yan, right? Okay. Second is Matino. Right? Wow. So obviously, Autak. we adhere to very a very high uh, level of ethical mm -hmm. standards, right? Mm -hmm. And the third one is Mapagbigay. Ayos right? Na. So it's the 3M philosophy. Right? Si those, those are si our values. Si Manny, yun yung pang-apat na M. Si Manny, si Manny yun. Si Manthony. If you want to become an Endeavor entrepreneur, you go through a rigorous selection process that involves local and international mentoring sessions. And if you go far, the final one will be a panel with the International Selection Committee. If you make it, congratulations. If you don't, well, why don't you try again? We'll find out more about the different practices of Endeavor with Manny when the boardroom returns. We've been talking about the company, its challenges, its causes. Well, why don't we talk to one of the catalysts behind Endeavor? Hi, Joanna. Hi, Anthony. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Can you actually work in a chair like this? You know, I have to say, not on an everyday basis, but every now and then we say crazy is a compliment, so these chairs give you crazy ideas. Crazy so. is a compliment. How would you describe the environment here in Endeavor? In Endeavor and in A-Space, no, it's uh, very open, I would say. We're always, uh, we always have our door open to welcome new people that want to talk to us about their companies, um, that want to see whether any of our mentors can help them, and uh, we like to celebrate. Well, you are involved primarily with the selection criteria for entrepreneurs and businesses, right, for Endeavor? Yes. Mm -hmm. I know one of the most important things is not just the business idea, but the person behind it. So what would you say is the most important thing that Endeavor looks for, at least personally, when it comes to the character of the entrepreneur? So I think what's particularly important when you look at the entrepreneurs is the role model effect. So this means that we really need to find individuals that are able to inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs. And if there's one thing that you appreciate most about Manny as a co-worker, as a coach, what would that be? I think it's the ability to actually know what his limits are and the willingness to empower his team. So Endeavor here is an extremely flat hierarchy, and that means when we come up with crazy ideas, then he's willing to implement them. That's great, that's great. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, let me just look at this. You heard that, Manny, right? I know you've been listening. So we're going back to you. Thank you, Joanna. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> Tell me about this first board meeting you had for Endeavor, where yeah. you had to present to a sea of captains how did that feel? I gotta tell you, that was a very humbling experience. So <laughs> one of the things that struck me as I was sitting in that room of Taipans was, my gosh, all of these guys who are super busy and doing very important things mm -hmm. have all taken the time out to go and help entrepreneurs, right? Because they're helping in two ways. They're helping with their financial support and they're also helping by sharing their expertise and their contacts. But none of them went through this when they started, right? I'm just thinking about this. None of them had to pitch in front of a group. None of them had to present themselves, you know, and be evaluated by a panel. So aren't we, in a sense, babying some of the entrepreneurs by giving them so much support yeah. to start up? Maybe the way to think about it is you're accelerating the growth of somebody, right? Okay. You're hopefully helping them avoid some of the most major mistakes. That Efficiencies. Then we talk about the business itself, right? So we need to see a few things. We need to see that this is a large and growing market. Mm -hmm. Because how can you have big impact if you're only, let's say, servicing 10 people? Right. You might have the best product for 10 people, but if that's all you're serving, then you're not very high impact, are right. you? Right? So it's, is it a large and growing market? Second is, are you doing anything innovative? 
kakaiba ba yung ginagawa? Bago ba to? Right. Or more this of the is same. The kind of thing that say that Entrepreneur Magazine would want to write right. about. Because part of what we're trying to encourage, right? We're trying to inspire other entrepreneurs or would be entrepreneurs to take the plunge, right? And I think people with the most sort of ambitious, transformative and innovative ideas are the ones that inspire the would be entrepreneurs. What would you say is the difference between the startup of today against the startup of our time? Oh, you mean uh, <laughs> you mean the 1990s? <laughs> the big difference is it is so much cheaper to do something today. Right? In the old days, just to be in business, you had to buy a whole bunch of servers. You had to have a whole bunch of very expensive right. coding guys right. on staff. You had to spend a whole lot of money on marketing. Today, I can have a working prototype for $25,000. It's not. Right? Why is that? Because it's not ownership, it's access. Right? I don't it's, have to buy my service, right, my, my right. servers, right? I don't have to spend that much in marketing because guess what? I can buy Facebook ads and do pay per play. I can use YouTube and post my videos. Right? I can use search engine optimization so that people find my site, and that's not very expensive. But isn't that also a problem that people now think it takes so little to be an entrepreneur? Oh, yep. with all the support, this is going to be a walk in the park. There was an article that came out in the UK um, some months ago, which was basically saying that startup culture is killing our youth and it's killing true entrepreneurship. Right. So what the article says is that too many kids, to your point, mm -hmm. think, wow, with a killer idea and access to some capital, I'm on my way to millions, right? Just with these two items, I can convince the world to buy my products in the millions. What they're not realizing, right, is the basics of business, right? Because I boil down the basics of business really to three things, right? Any business is either about making stuff, or in the case of minerals, finding stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. a product, selling stuff, okay, right? And then keeping score, right? So keeping score is all about the gathering numbers. all the data right. to make meaningful insights so that you can plan accordingly. Well, I want right? to use this opportunity to, to, to give advice. We call this fast talk, so very quickly, sure. if you can. Sure. Yeah. So what would you say is the number one factor in succeeding in entrepreneurs? Grit. Grit. Yes. How would you define grit? Grit is having the fortitude, having the perseverance to keep on going no matter what. What is the number one pitfall? I would say it's hubris. Oh, kaya ko na right? Too ko na many people think they know all the answers and they don't want to take advice. What has been most inspiring for you? Inspiring an endeavor has been the generosity that permeates throughout the network. Almost 1,500 entrepreneurs helped worldwide, 600,000 lives impacted, and close to $10 billion in invested capital. It's not just about money in Endeavor, it's about manpower, it's about mentoring, and it's about the many networks that you develop over time. Let's find out more from Manny about the plans of Endeavor in the Philippines when the boardroom returns. Endeavor Philippines is home to many great mentors to make sure that these companies, for example, those listed here, actually succeed in business. We have people like Jin B. Go of BPI Family, Jim Lafferty of British American Tobacco, and David Guerrero of BBDO Guerrero. Well, these mentors will show these entrepreneurs from Endeavor how to succeed, not just in the short term, but in the long term. Vanny tells us more. Is there a uh, priority industry that people should get into now? I would say that in the Philippines, anything that has something to do with consumption, mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. about 70% of our GDP, I think that's an interesting place to play. The role of a mentor in succeeding in life. Who has been your? Could you name a couple, Manny? I mean, your own mentors? A recent quote by uh, Richard Branson was, behind every successful entrepreneur, is a successful mentor who's taken the time to help the entrepreneur. So this, this is probably a very unconventional kind of mentoring. Mm -hmm. so actually, I would have to say it's my father 
who passed away when I was 13. And so the reason I say he continues to be a mentor, I think sometimes in life when you have an ideal to aspire to, it becomes a very powerful sort of motivator, right? And so the, the key idea about my father yes, please. is that nice guys can finish first, right? Because he was a, you know, a living example of that because he was very successful in his career, mm. very successful in his family, very successful in his community life. So how do we do that then? How do we multiply that? How, how in, in, in a sense, you do it in Endeavor. As I said yeah, earlier, that's right. you support these guys, yeah. but you gotta crack the whip when necessary. How do you balance those two? I guess it's a little bit like parenting. Right, right? exactly. Where, you know, sometimes people confuse uh, the word love with license, right? They think love means, oh, okay, I give in to everything. When in fact, one of the most loving words for a parent is no. There's the loving no, right? Because it's not good for you. And so the way we help our entrepreneurs, one of the key ways we help them is through mentoring, as we said, right? And so we have a service program that includes putting together an advisory board. Mm -hmm. right? And the advisory board would be composed of people from our mentor network here, people who are experts in their field, right? So people like David Guerrero mm -hmm. from BBDO, People like Nori Poblador from Navigar, which is a big private equity company. People like Paulo Mercado, who's from Nestle, right? Who's an expert in marketing. This board will sit down with the entrepreneur and basically map out the strategy and say, what are the things you're trying to accomplish? What are your weak points? What are the areas you need to improve on? And how do you execute this over the next 12 to 24 months? Do you have to compensate and pay for these advisors to be in your boards? And this is, this is what's so touching about the people in our network. These people who are uber busy, they're taking time out to do this, right? So these advisory board meetings, they happen quarterly. This is the way, I guess, we sometimes provide those loving no's, right? By saying, you know, have you thought about this, right? You want to do this, but, you know, in my experience, if you do this, here's what could happen. Have you thought about this? So the next time somebody comes to me and says, no, Anthony, I say, thank you for your love. <laughs> you know, it sounds corny, but a lot of this advice is a gift, right? It a lot is, of this advice is. is a gift. Right? People are drawing back into their own bank of experience and say, let me share some of the things that I've observed. What do you right? think would be the number one biggest achievement of Endeavor in the last two years? You know, last year we won the Rice Bowl Enabler of the Year Award, right? So the Rice Bowl Award is awarded by a Malaysian-based company that deals a lot with the startup community. Obviously, it's not... Um, you know, one of the most well-recognized awards in the world, but I think it sort of validated some of the work we were doing, right? Well, I'd like to give you the opportunity to give advice to aspiring entrepreneurs. If you had advice, what would that be? Yeah. I guess I have two pieces of advice okay. for entrepreneurs. So the first one is if you're starting out, well, maybe even if you're not starting out, um, is to think about your sweet spot. There are four elements mm -hmm. to the sweet spot, right? It's when four things converge. Look at this right? professor. the conversions now. of... <laughs> professor Manny, go. What I'm good at. Okay. It's one thing to be good at something. It's one thing to be passionate right. about this. And actually, so much of the literature today about entrepreneurship talks about passion. Right? Mm -hmm. But... but mm -hmm. Actually, passion is just one of right. four elements. So, magaling ka na, mahano pa ginagawa mo. Love Third mo. is what the world needs, okay. right? Because people find so much meaning when they're doing something that actually helps other people. And the last thing, which is the practical thing, is what the world's willing to pay for, right? So, if you do just the first three, then that's charity, right? But I think what we've observed, right, is if you can create a self-sustained economic engine in pursuit of a higher purpose, that's the perfect combination. Okay, that's your first, the sweet spot. And the, the second one? The second, the second piece of advice, which we talked about earlier, is you, know, you need to start thinking about success in a different way from the conventional wisdom. Right? Conventional wisdom is you're successful if your company's big. And by extension, you're successful if your bank account is big. At Endeavor, so what's, what's at Endeavor we, like to, you know, we like to say that success is actually what the size of your positive impact in an ecosystem is. What kind of ripple effects did you make in the world because you were a successful business person and because you paid it forward? And the uh, sweet spot, this uh, mission statement, is going to lead to a certain kind of success. And can you close our time with you by defining the success that Manny is heading towards to, if not yet? My BHAG for Endeavor in the Philippines, my big, big hairy, hairy audacious, audacious goals, goals, 
is that when we celebrate our 10th birthday, we will have 100 entrepreneurs that we're helping. And hopefully, those hundreds are touching thousands of other people in the ecosystem. And we hope to be there to celebrate with you. All right. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Running a business is like riding a bicycle. You stop pedaling and you fall. Thank you to Endeavor for keeping us pedaling by helping us with 3,000 mentors worldwide that gives us access to markets, capital, and talent. Join me again next week as we engage some of the country's top business leaders, innovators, and executives. I'm Anthony Pangilinan, and this is The Boardroom.